watch on your computer or television, then yeah, it probably looks more appealing than the short YouTube shorts live. But again, not going to get on that too much because of the fact that it's what YouTube wants. But we're going to change it up a little bit tonight, and we're going widescreen. Shout out to Titans Rossi, by the way. If you've not watched his show yesterday on a Sunday afternoon, I'm sorry, Saturday afternoon, uh, Titans Rossi killed it. I mean, honestly, almost 200 likes. Uh, there was tons of people in there, 150 people in the room. Uh, just YouTube alone. Plus, he had multiple, multiple people on the Twitter account, X, and a lot of great comments. A lot of great comments. So, Hopefully, we'll do the same tonight. If not, we're just having fun being here. So, shout out to all of you. I see some of you guys are trickling right now. Um, Jackson Davis, shout out to him for being a member. You guys forgot Leon just gave away a ton of memberships in the, in the last one. Um, this, If we hit 200 likes, and that was the night that we picked up Sneed on Friday night. And this guy went four hours. Four hours of talking Sneed. And, and no, trust me. If you watched that four-hour show, some of you did. You were in there the whole time. You can back me up on this. It was entertaining. So I don't care what people say. Okay? I don't care what people say. Let them run their mouth. But nobody fell asleep in this show. Not even upload himself. So, again, you guys made it fun. You made it special. And that's what it's about. Right? This channel created by fans for fans for a reason. Never putting ourselves above anyone. You guys in here to watch me? No, I think you're in here to conversate. I think you're in here to let the community know just how you feel about the Tennessee Titans. And I honestly think that means more than anything else. Pitbull says, with the true number one corner in their uh, uh, top tier slot corner, uh, freeze defensive to, hold on, let me see. I got to slow down with this one, Pitbull. But I think Nick, Nick Petit Ferrer will be given every chance to be a lockdown right tackle Raidens will be a com competition at guard. You know, I kind of forgot about Raidens at guard. It's a good point. I, I kind of envision him being more in the loop with right tackle this year, but again, we'll see what happens. Titans Rossi again, shout out yesterday. Great show, buddy. Great show. Jay, thank you for being a moderator. we got a lot of new moderators in the house. Uh, you don't see two pa paragraphs. I copy and paste over. He puts Mike Florio of NBC sports. It's also confused by the Chiefs' decision to let the front office go, breaking uh, the collective bargaining agreement rules on that matter. Florio suggested that the Chiefs didn't intend to extend Snead when they placed the franchise tag on him, which isn't allowed under current rules of the NFLPA. So, hey, that Chiefs might be in hot water, he says. Now, let's kind of talk about, we're going to talk about these expectations. You can see on the left hand uh, of the show what we're going to be talking about tonight. And again, I'm pumped. Hopefully, we won't have to go to robot voice like we did uh, the other day. But again, when it comes to Sneed, there were a couple things that, again, I wasn't sure how it was going to portray. I didn't want to give up a first-round pick. I didn't want to give up a second-round pick. And to be quite honest, Ran listened, and he didn't give either one of those up. He did give up a third-round pick next year, which I can live with. We don't have one this year. But when it comes to the situation with Sneed, the more and more I hear, the more and more I look up. This guy researches, by the way, okay? There, there is something to that. So, again, you, you got there's a lot going on here. Um, there's, there's something I found. I'm going to read it to you, too, that I think you'll feel a lot better about Sneed coming to the Titans because I know not everyone's sold on it. Not everybody's sold on Sneed coming to the Titans, and there are a lot of people still upset about the knee. We don't know about the knee. I don't know about the knee. Okay. I'm a doctor. Okay. But, but I'm, again, I, I, or I'm not a doctor, doctor upload. I'm not a doctor. But my point is, even if I was a doctor, I'm not a Tennessee Titans doctor. So I don't know. Do doctors can't even come on it, comment on it because they're not there either. This really comes down to Rand and if he trusts his doctors um, and what they're going to tell him. And he's got to listen to him. He's got to be honest with him. We went through this in, in the four hour live show the other night. Like, you have to really trust the doctors and what they're going to tell you because ultimately this is a business, right? You hear about business decisions. You hear about, oh, this guy gets cut, but it's okay because it's a business. The team's just doing business stuff. Amy fires Vrabel and John Robinson because it's business. 
So both have to be true when it comes to Rand Carthon bringing in a guy that supposedly has bad knees. Again, our guy, Titans for life, right? James says he's looking at more of a meniscus tear, which, again, if you're going to look at knee injuries, ACL, meniscus tear, bone on bone, whatever, I think for the most part, that is something we can live with, which means he fought through it. He tried to fight through it. He played with it, won a Super Bowl, and now all of a sudden, coming into this year, maybe he does have to get surgery in the offseason, but he should be ready to go. It's not the neck like Chase Young, so we don't have to worry about that at least. But we'll break a lot of this stuff down, and I'll, I'll kind of give you some things here, obviously, for tuning in on Sunday night. Shout out to you. But I will give you some interesting nuggets that you should feel better about Snead. Okay? I will start this off, too. We'll, we'll go to the poll question. We've got 41 poll questions. Okay? 41 poll questions. 41 people have already commented on the poll. Um, so we'll get to that. My question is, what's the biggest need? So we talk about what Rand's cooking next. Don't forget to tighten up that like button. It helps push this thing out. It really does. It's so, in, I mean, if you wait to the end, fine. But if you're going to do it, do it now. It helps. So when it comes to Rand Carthon, what do you, what's he going to do next? What What's he got cooking next? Um, when you're talking about cap room, you know, $19 million against the cap for whatever it is. Um, is roughly what it's going to cost Snead. I don't know if that all 19 is going to count on this season. It usually don't. It usually is a little bit lower. All the other free agents we brought in this year, that average money cap, maybe it's just because of the signing bonus, but that those are all a little bit lower. Like Pollard's averaging, what, $7 million or $8 million a year, but against the cap this year, Pollard's only counting roughly against, what, four point five. So, So I don't think that's going to be that big of an issue. I think you're going to have a lot of cap room. you got to be smart with your cap room. You're going to need your number seven pick, so you're going to need and a, and a high second pick, so you're going to need some um, some money to save for the for the NFL draft, so, so you got that going on. But I do st- still think the Titans have a few moves that they need to make, and we've been through this. So we'll get this out of the way early on in the show, and then we'll really dive into Snead. First thing I would say is we've kind of been round and round. We, we need an inside linebacker. And there are people that argue. Uh, most teams get away from inside linebackers. Most, most teams don't sign middle inside middle linebackers anymore. Really mean he's going to be the new coach's problem. Scott Kimberly says Titans should keep some cap space for some late season moves. I love your uh, profile with the the New York Giants there, Scott. Appreciate you, buddy. Speaking of Scott, if you are a Giants fan, Tredavious White, we'll talk about him a little bit later, is... He was supposed to visit the Titans, and then now he's supposed to visit the Giants. But the connection is he'll go to the Giants. Uh, Graham said that UConn won. That stinks. That stinks. So back to the show. So let, let's dive into this. Let's talk about the expectations of Sneed. So I'm, I'm pumped about this. So here we go. Bam. All right. So this is Sneed 2023. And again, if you've been on the channel before and you've seen the channel before this is no real different I mean this is exactly kind of what you've seen before we've, we've went over this slide before we've talked about the slide before again like as long as you aren't falling asleep yet sorry I just had to I, I kind of chuckled at that one I, I did I, I just chuckled at that one uh, but anyways whatever um, with Sneed by the way okay with Sneed 1,004 snaps over the last three years. So he's definitely durable, plus playoff runs. It's not like the Chiefs don't go far in the playoffs. They've won back-to-back Super Bowls. So he's got that experience. And and I'll be honest, he's got that confidence, right? As, as some would say, he's got that dog in him. He's got that dog in him. right? He, he does. He, he's, he's legitimately, you saw him throw down Tyree Kill. I mean, I know Tyree Kill's a real small guy, but still. He is, like, not going to back down. Like, you can't make a mistake against Tyreek Hill. You'll get destroyed. And he just didn't care, and he just walloped him. You're getting him for four years, $76 million. That's roughly around 19 He wanted 22 okay? Best game of the year was against the Bills. It was like a 91 overall score. It, it was really phenomenal, week 14. His war score last year was seventh, and I'm going to get to this in a minute. His coverage grade was 71.9. He didn't have any sacks last year. He did have two interceptions. 
Now, he did have 17 penalties. Six did not count. So that is an issue. There was one game where he had his lowest score, and I can't remember who that was against. It was like a 40-whatever. Uh, man, I wish I knew what game that was. But he literally, literally um, had like four penalties in that game. It was not a good performance. So maybe it was just the, the style of the ref. Now, he wasn't that bad last year, and we'll get to that, okay? But he did still give up under nine points, or basically 9.7 yards per uh, reception, which, to be honest, it's under 10. It's, it's good. The other thing that we talked about before we talked about it a long time Friday night was the fact that Snead is, if you're throwing his way, there's two things that are really important to me. Are, are the passes being completed, number one? And then number two, like which kind of goes into the the effect with the knockdowns or interceptions or whatever, what's that passer rating like when it's being thrown his way? And the passer rating is off the charts, 55.9. That is impressive. That is impressive. You know, when we go back in the day, talk about Ryan Tannehill, he might he might have been he might have been okay. He might have had like a 100.4 passer rating and he might have threw for like 150 yards and two touchdowns and no picks, right? Maybe sacked twice. And you're like, wow, you had a hundred passer rating. This guy, when you throw his direction, it's 55.8 or 55.9. That is good. Okay. Second thing I told you, are they being completed? Basically one out of every two are being completed. 51%. That is good. Because there are some guys that we have on our roster right now that are not nearly as good as Snead when it comes to those two parts. Not nearly as enough. McCrary, just to put him in context, 87 point whatever passer rating thrown his way. Okay? But McCrary's actually can hold his own in this discussion. I know he's mostly slot, but he can hold his own. Again, we have, I don't even know. I've lost track. Got 89 in here, 38 likes. Appreciate the likes, buddy. Appreciate the likes. If you don't want to hit the like, it's fine. As someone said last show, he only begs for likes. No, no. Just kind of said tighten up the like button. No worries. Okay. 91 in the house. So this is kind of what we got. I mean, this is some really good things. Now, he did not give up any touchdowns thrown his way this year. Shout out to the producer for that one. Shout out to the producer for that stat. He He didn't give up any. Uh, There was a guy on our roster. He's still on our roster, I think. His name was Trey Avery. Trey Avery, okay, gave up six touchdowns. And and this guy's averaging 1,004 snaps. Trey Avery gave you 300 snaps and gave up six touchdowns. This guy is not Trey Avery. This guy's not Christian Fulton. So when you're talking about expectations, everybody, Bringing in a number one, true number one corner. And that was one of the things I hear from you in your comments. We just hit it over 100. The thing is, you guys say it over and over and over. Luke's one of them. So shout out to Luke. When's the last time the Titans have had a number one true corner? Some of you will say Finnegan. He's a seventh round pick, but he ended up being pretty good out of Sanford. Former Bulldog, rough, rough, rough. Samari Roll? I mean... I wouldn't say Pac-Man Jones was. He could have probably been that guy. Pac-Man was outstanding, especially in the return game. Fortunately, it just didn't work out. But, yeah, Pac-Man would have been great. You know what I'm saying? But, fortunately, it didn't work. So, again, when you're talking about him in 2023, it's a pretty good year. Okay? It's a pretty good year. And, and, And when you go to this playoffs, 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 he was he was even better in the playoffs. So he's playing his best ball in the most crunch time situation. Now I'd argue the Miami game was his best game. The Super Bowl game, I think he had a pat um overall pro football focus grade of a 55 in the Super Bowl. So that's not very good. But he won and he was always against the number one guy. He was always against the number one guy. So again, when we put him into context with okay, what are our real expectations here? I'm going to do this for you, okay? I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to go to the main screen here. We're going to main screen. Here's the the expectations, okay? 
Here are the expectations. I don't give a darn about your expectations when it comes to Snead. I don't care what the media says about Snead. I don't care what I say about Snead. Here's the bottom line. It don't matter what's on that piece of paper. Snead has to be a number one corner. Hands down. He has to be. He has to be. There's no discussion. Well, you know, we, we maybe we'll wait a couple years and, you know, no, no. Maybe we got to get, you know, the, the defensive line's got to be here. Or, you know, he's going to need to deal with these guys. And, and, and no, 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 no. Ran traded, got a steal, by the way, third round pick next year and flip flop sevens this year. You are paying this guy $19 million. He has to be a true number one corner and not just the true number one corner for the Tennessee Titans, but I'm talking around the national football league. He's got to be there. There's no other discussion about it. There's no other discussion. Now I'm not going to go as far as some and say like, Oh yeah, now we got him. We'll, we'll, we're, we're a lot going to the playoffs. No, 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 no. Here, here's the issue when it comes to Snead, you could have the best corners in the world. You can go out and get Justin Simmons. And he could return to his prime. Awuzie could return back to 2021 and how effective he was there. This guy, Sneed, could go back to, I'm going to foreshadow a little bit, but 2022, where he was was awesome. I know he gave up a lot of, I'll save that. But he he was amazing in 2022. He really was. He was better in 2022 than he was last year. You could have all those pieces come together. Will Levis could be like almost MVP of the league. But there's one thing the Titans cannot do right now. And it has, and Rand knows it. He's smart. He understands it's a process. And you guys know in the chat. And I do care what you guys think. I, I mean, I do. I'm just going on my soapbox. And the one thing on defense we cannot do with who we have is stop the run. We cannot do it. We cannot do it. I, I love Landry. I love you know, Simmons, but they can't do it alone. You don't have the middle linebackers to hold up at this point. You don't. Kenneth Murray Jr., his weakness is stopping the run. Like, and and he really can't cover anybody either. He can kind of rush the passer. So he's going to be one of those, you know, like, uh, I'm trying to think, like, he can he can do uh, one thing really good and get after the passer. So in certain key situations, that's going to be that guy, and they're going to hope to get a little bit more out of him as the season goes on. But that's kind of what they're looking for, Kenneth Murray Jr. I do not think they brought him in to be the true number two or the true number one, but they certainly are paying him pretty good. They will get that fixed. They will get that addressed. But right now, if you're going up against any other team, they're going to run the football on you, and it's not even close. You think of this division, Houston, okay? They got a pretty good offensive line. Jacksonville's got a decent offensive line. They're not great, but they, they're decent. Um, you look at the Colts. I mean, the Colts for being as, oh gosh, they think they're so much better than we are, and that's fine. But for the Colts, like, they could run the ball very effectively against you. Their, their line could. And that's just the division. Not to mention the other teams we're going to face this year who can run the football. So the Titans are going to have to get there. But for tonight's show, let's just focus on the secondary because I think that's kind of a big deal, and then we'll get to your comments. So here's 2022. 2022. You all ready? Here we go. 2022. So doing research from, from not this past year but the year before, which does matter, by the way, especially when you're talking about a player who's 27 years old. If we can go back to guys in Kenneth Murray Jr. and talk about, oh, well, we're going to try to get him to where he was his rookie year, then I have every right to bring up 2022 and to talk about LeJerry Sneed and basically our new quarterback who we're super pumped about. He's awesome. Okay? How good can he be? We're going to get into that. So here we go. Coverage grade was better last year than it was this year. He actually had four sacks last year. Okay? He actually got after the passer. When I was doing some research and finding going through pictures, besides the Zay Flowers playoff goal line fumble, you know, one guy he didn't care to get in there and he just got right in there like it was no big deal. 
you guessed it, Derrick Henry. He was not afraid to tackle Derrick Henry at all. So, wish I had that picture for you. I don't, but but it's out there. Again, three interceptions, which is better than two. He only had nine penalties. They all counted. The year before, we talked about last year was 17. So, again, 17 penalties in 2023, 11 counted. This past season, okay, 2022, I should say, he only had nine. So, that's good. Nine yards per reception. Thanks for the thumbs down. I appreciate it. Hopefully, we don't fall asleep. Um, but anyways, 74 coverage grade. Pretty good. Pretty good. When you're talking about his splits in 2022, he actually split time as slot and outside. And out of those guys who split, not everybody, but who they split, played a little outside, played a little uh, middle, 200 is the minimum there, of each side or each part. He ranked number one when it came to um, basically a coverage grade. Number one. It's phenomenal. He was top 10 going into 2023 with forced fumbles. He came up with a huge one in the playoff game. He had eight interceptions and 18 tackles for loss between 2020 and 2022. And he wasn't really good. He didn't get a ton of snaps in 2022, by the way. So when you're talking about 2020, put that off to his side as rookie year. But 2021 and 2022 is pretty effective. Now, he did give up five touchdowns in 2022. He did give up five touchdowns, but he didn't give up any last year. So we have to put that in context. So, again, when you're talking, and I'm going to read this for you because I think I need to. Is it okay if I read to you? Is it okay? Do you want to get a blankie and, and, and get ready to fall asleep as I read to you? Is it okay to do something like that? Or should I just talk about who knows what for about whatever? So I'm going to read to you. Hope you're okay with it. So this is what I got. Adding to his game and his ability uh, to make plays with his 6.5 sacks and 30 total pressures are the most of any quarterback or cornerback since 2020. Again, this is going into 2023, this past season. He also ranks top 10 in his position and forced fumbles. We just told you that. Tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Told you that as well. And then interceptions, eight. Over that span, again, from 2020 to 2022. So they go on to say locking up Snead is likely to be very expensive. True. Franchise tag, 19.5 million, one in 22. But considering the impact of how much he had on the defense in Kansas City and how much he's an emerging star in the league, he should be in conversations as one of Kansas City's most important players moving forward. Hallelujah. Again, I'm going to read that, that line back again. We're talking about not just some random tighten up load out there running his mouth. We're talking about a very, I won't give it to you, but it's very trustworthy scouting, those kind of things. Said, but considering the impact that Snead has on the defense and how he's an emerging star in the league, he should be in the conversation for one of Kansas City's most important players moving forward. Now, I'm even going to go one more for you. Okay. Again, I know it's not the end all be all when it comes to pro football focus. So we'll go to the main screen here. I know it's not the most important thing, but I will tell you this. Okay. According to pro football focus in 2022 season, 2022 season, they would have given not Jones, who had 13.5 sacks. They actually had a higher war score for Snead and said that he actually had more of an impact on the Kansas City Chiefs in 2022 and would have given him the defensive war MVP for that defense and not Jones. That is a guy that we have on the Titans. That is a guy that we can be excited about. We have 104 votes. Uh, we'll get to that as soon as I'm done rambling. We'll get to your comments. But that's important. That is important to put in context of what player you're getting. See, so many people will see, oh, Sneed, he won the Super Bowl in 2023, and, oh, he maybe he only had two interceptions, okay? But because of the franchise tag and because of the, uh, the nature of everybody wanting to trade for this guy and you getting the prize – Sometimes we think that's better than what the actual prize is because we won. 
If you do not believe me, then you know exactly what I'm going to tell you when you guys do something. If you're you know legal age and you play the lottery or you do one of those little scratch-offs, you're expecting to lose. You think you can win, but the, the real the realization from playing a scratch-off is that you're going to lose. It's just the way it is, right? You bet on five games for March Madness and you're going to do a parlay. You're probably going to think, hey, wow, I could win and win all this money, but realistically, I'll probably lose and I'm not going to win, right? That, that's just the way it works. But when it comes to, I think when it comes to this and when it comes to Sneed and it comes to him being a Tennessee Titan and you winning this trade, I don't think it has anything to do about it. You got a great player and Rand got him for a cheap price as far as draft picks and you're paying him to be your number one corner for the next four years, which would be 31, by the way. So, yeah, you might get excited to win a dollar on a scratch-off. I can't imagine how excited you were to get Snead. But the more you dig and the more you look and you go around the National Football League, okay, you get out of the bubble of just listening to local Titans feeds, which is fine. I, I do that. I love my local Titans feeds. But my point is, go talk to a Kansas City Chief fan. Go listen to what Kansas City's talking about. And you'll get your real impression of what kind of guy you got. And almost every single comment that I got because I asked and Rossi asked. Okay, power I was going to ask probably tomorrow night. And Tyler, is what in the world when it comes to Sneed for Kansas City Chief fans, how good was he? How good was he? And every single Chief fan that comes in here they might say, well, the knee was a little skeptical, but you're getting a really great player. Let's get to your comments. Oh, I love it. I love it. I got to go all the way back up here. 126 comments so far. We got 134 of you in the house. Don't forget to tighten up that like button. I'm trying to get 100 likes tonight. Right now, we're only 37 minutes in. Uh, we're already talking about UConn. We got through that. MB in the house. What's going on, MB? Good to see you. XD Gamers fan, Titan Kong says at pick 38, if Jared Verse or Robinson are still on the board, I'm taking one of those guys. 38, I'm taking myself some Kool-Aid. Explain that uh, shortly to the 145 club, but eventually let all that out. David said we should see if we could trade Malik Willis. Oh, my goodness, David. We, we kind of get into that, too, the other night, Friday night. I'm not trading Malik. We're going to let him play it out, and we're going to hope – that Callahan can have an uh, impact on him, and, and maybe Callahan can actually trust him to throw the football. That's going to be huge because Vrabel obviously didn't. Nick the Fish says Logan Ryan is being a number one corner. I mean, remember, Logan was pretty solid in the slot. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't kind of use him as a number one corner, but he was very effective coming up. He was great tight. Um, Finnegan was feisty. He was, was not afraid of anybody. Black Ninja DJ says, I get the feeling that we are going to trade down in the second round. This is how the process is shaking out. I could say this. There is, there is no way, there, there is no way that you're going to trade um, out of seven if Alt or Fashano are sitting there. There is no way. And, and we don't want that to happen. Now, they might both be there. And you might be like, well, you could still get one and maybe only drop back a couple spots, then fine, right? If you really have on your draft board. And this is the thing we talked about. I don't really care what one one site says or this site says or this site says or this, you know, Todd McShay or whatever um, on television. The bottom line is we got to hope, and, we, and it's going to work out, right? GMs do this. We just got to hope that the the – the surroundings, okay, the staff, the scouts, people giving their information, finding their information, giving it to Rand. We just got to hope that Rand trusts his board. Floyd Reese would always say that, trust your board. You cannot get into these scenarios where you're guessing. 
and you're you're assuming because the draft is crazy. The draft is crazy sometimes, and it goes fast. You think the the ten minutes or whatever does? Oh, trust me, it goes fast, especially when you wait till two minutes fielding calls or trying to field calls. But when it comes down to a push come to shove, when it comes down to this whole thing, trying to figure it out, okay, trying to figure it out. If you got Alt and he's the highest on your board, if Fashano is way ahead of Fashano and you're at seven and you got Fashano and Alt sitting on the board, you still you have to trust the board and take Alt, even over a draft pick. You just got to do it. Translate compared to how Vrabel Rand, Vrabel Rand thinks. Jay says, yeah, the lowest point of the season, Simmons would probably agree, was after the Ravens game across the pond. You forgot about Werner. Oh, my gosh. Werner was pretty decent. Sin City Titan, shout out to you. Thanks for being a member and a moderator. Says, how, are, how are people saying right tackle is a bigger need than middle linebacker? Well, I mean, if you ask Floyd Reese, I think both of them would be on the list. But Floyd would always complain about the Titans not having a right tackle until they got Conklin. To be fair to Floyd, like, Titans never really got good until they had Jack Conklin. Sin City Titans says, I don't think he's going to be bad, but uh, I think he's going to be to be that true number one that up will want. He doesn't think so. I do. Lefevre says, tighten up. He's a blitz linebacker. He's an attacking the defense. That That's fine. But if you're not great at tackling and you're blitzing a lot, then you're leaving holes. You're, you're making your team vulnerable if the defensive line can't bail you out. LZS says, hope you guys have a good season. I'm a Packers fan. But I like Will Levis. Appreciate it, man. We love uh, Tom Grossi on this network. Um, he's doing an amazing job, and and shout out to him, and shout out to the Packers. They actually looked pretty good to end the season. Titan Kong says, let's go and get Simmons. Isaiah, Sim- no, so Isaiah Simmons, according to, um, obviously, him and Pro Football Focus, his war scores are terrible. 200s for the last three years. 204, 206, whatever, 240, whatever. It's not very good. Um, but he's a former first round pick. If we're going to do the same thing with Kenneth Murray Jr., then maybe we should be able to do the same thing with him and bring him in and see what happens. Maybe it was a bad environment thing with the Cardinals. Uh, Sneeds a dog said, Scott, I'm wondering if analytics, how much to uh, free agent signings and trades. I'm sure it was. Scott also said you should trade down a lot of good mid round talent out there. Jared verse. Um, Sin City Titans says if we get a little help in the front seven, Snead will be a true cornerback number one. Uh, let's see. Upload story time. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Hey, what's going on, Titan MVP? Thanks for being a member. Appreciate you. Read me to sleep. Sorry, William. <laughs> you would think that. Oh, my goodness. Do you guys think it's time to win the Super Bowl? I mean, I don't know who's spreading those rumors, but the Titans got a long way yet to win a Super Bowl. Um, we're going to get into no-fly zone next, if you're keeping track at home. Talked about what's cooking. Talked about the Sneed's expectations. Now we're moving into no-fly zone. Feel like getting some scratch-offs now for some reason. I love the fact that they clear, clearly have a plan, and they're working that plan. That is a really good point. You're getting a shout-out, Titan MVP, because how many times do you see – Teams just kind of do whatever, and they don't really follow the plan of what they're trying to work for. They had a clear plan to bring in Snee. They were like, hey, we'll give you a third-round pick next year. I'm not sure the sevens was in there, whatever. But not only that, we will bring in, uh, what, four million? The rumor is four years, 80 million. And they ended up getting him for four years, 76 million, which basically means Rand did not panic and overplay his card and overpay. He didn't do it. He could have easily gave into the demands and paid the full asking price or more. Okay. I I would imagine Rand's really good at buying homes. Like I'm being that in all uh, honesty. Here we go. Talking about home uh, real estate again. We did this Friday night. You get people in here talking real estate, but it's true. Rand didn't panic and he had a price. He wasn't going over that price and he was able to even Get it down a little bit later. Rand buying a car might be an awesome experience too. How about that? How about that? We'll bring Rand. We'll go. We'll meet Rand in Nashville. Okay. I'll tell him how mad and upset I am because he never came and said hi to me being a season ticket holder, being on the field. And he was literally like 10 yards from us and he couldn't come over and say hi. I will use that to my advantage 
and I will tell Rand, hey, to make it up for me, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this camera, okay? We're going to take this camera again, and we're going to take some other cameras. We're going to take the uh, the gimbal. We're going to follow Rand around, and we're going to follow him into buying a car, and we're going to give you that experience how it is Rand buying a car. I bet you it's off the charts, but that is kind of a GM that you want. You want a GM who can find the best deals for the best value. And that's the thing when it comes to this channel. I'm not going to come on here and just hoot and holler. I need to have some value to bring to you. If I don't have much value to bring to you, I just don't do it because I don't want to waste your time. And I know you don't want to come on here and waste your time either. So, again, that was really cool Friday night just to go on and on and on about Sneed and, and ask you guys what you wanted and, and look up every different angle because we had so much time, plus we covered so much other stuff when it comes to the Tennessee Titans. It definitely was a great experience. I loved it. And I loved hanging out with all of you guys for up till 2 in the morning or whatever it was, Central Time. But again, value goes a long way. And I feel like Rand is doing a good job bringing guys in. I'm not saying Kenneth Murray Jr. or Andre Diller last year, but he's bringing these guys in with value. They're trying to make your team better. And they're doing great. Uh, Lime Volcano, cool name. I got a good question for you, Lime. He said, Titans got better and worse at the same time. I'm going to ask you this, Lime. Who would win in a fight? A volcano or a tornado? Let me know. Got to have a reason, though. Volcano versus tornado. And I'll let you know why I bring that up. Jesse says he's good 100%, but he does, does draw a lot of penalties. That will be his biggest issue. And we're, we're, we've kind of... Um, you know, it's part of the game, I guess. If you want to be aggressive, you're going to draw penalties. Kool-Aid was the same way in college. He's a guy that I want to be on the Titans from Alabama. That's one of his biggest issues. He's one of the smartest players. He's one of the smartest corners on the board. You can have him probably at 38, maybe. He's not the fastest guy, but he can cover ground quick. And he plays off the charts, and he's not afraid to bump, bump and run you which means getting to the line of scrimmage and giving you a pop on your shoulder pad and staying right with you, okay? He's great at reading screens. That's a guy I would love to have on the Titans with this other group, and they would truly be the no-fly zone, and they're bringing youth into the equation. But I just don't know if you don't have a middle linebacker and you don't have a defensive line to go with Simmons and you don't have a right guard, a right tackle, and you don't have a safety? I'm not sure. Although I think drafting a safety that high would be ridiculous. Uh, Carter, what's going on? We're back. Let's go. Titans are back. I think the Titans are back. Mighty Ice says, take the BBA. BPA. Uh, if alt isn't there, you can't find someone to trade back with. And that that's honest. That is a good... Um, love the logo, Hollywood, NWO. But Mighty Ice is right. Like People get mad about trading. But if you can't, you don't have a partner to trade down, you end up taking Corey Davis at number five. Top tier says, I don't think the Titans would take Olu at seven, in my opinion. Adam says, Joe Alt, left tackle, Notre Dame, let's go. Uh, Williams says, taking a, or Titans pick will depend on the six before the seven. SB Titan says, I bet the Titans win the South. I love that. Coming down to the wire, AM in Houston, let us know. Houston up by two with second, with up by two of seconds remaining. Wow, Ken Moore not going to be happy they lose that one. Uh, considering top heavy this draft is, trading down in the second round gets you a third round pick could strongly be considered. I agree with the uh, Ninja DJ there. Need Houston to win, Jay. Graham says, I know this isn't Titans related, but the only one that thinks that Caleb Williams is going to be a bust and cancer in his team, the locker room. Are you the only one? No. He didn't give up his medical. He's the only one in NFL history that didn't do that at the combine. That is a ridiculous, I mean, who, who is this guy? And then Caleb Williams, like in the beginning saying he wasn't going to, didn't want to go to the bears at number one, I guess Manning's did that. Although Manning's father had more to do with that than they did. But again, bears fans, I mean, they were torn over, over fields and the Steelers get them for a sixth round pick. But again, sixth round pick. They're eventually going to have to make a decision on fields. You gave up a third round pick next year, and you've already made your decision on Snead paying him. So that that's why it just puts it into context. Like, gosh, that that's like a it's amazing. Uh, Farley's 
Farley's got two things going on. One, the physical, and now the mental. The mental part is obviously how do you come back from losing your dad in your house and the way it happened. I, I don't think anybody could ever get over that. Prayers still to this day for Caleb Farley. And it's a shame that some Titan fans went off the rails with that. I'm not even going to mention the guy's name on Twitter, but oh my gosh, what an idiot he was to run his mouth about Farley after his dad died. Just ridiculous. Some people just don't. Common sense. It's just not there. But the other element is the back surgeries. So, like, Farley's got a lot to overcome, but keeps working hard and he's still on the team. Might get one more shot at it this uh, preseason. So, if he can come back, which the way I'm thinking is, uh, I think he would have retired by now, or he, so I think he's probably going to give it a go. Um, Again, we are 50 minutes in, 142 watch. I appreciate every single one of you. Don't forget to tighten up that like button. We're trying to get 100 likes, we're at 68. I wanted to read the poll question to you right now. The, the poll question for you, okay, so let me flip-flop cameras here. So the poll question for you was, where's the biggest need on the Tennessee Titans? And, and for me, it's it's inside linebacker 100%. Okay, there's no sugar coating it around. I mean, that's what it is. It's inside linebacker, okay? Uh, you, I could also argue D-line, but we do have Simmons there. So he's going to make a – he's a force, by the way, if you haven't figured that out. Big Jeff. Like, he's a force. He's like two guys in there. But he needs help. But you also need more help right now inside linebacker. So I would go inside linebacker. You guys said inside linebacker, 31%. 39% of you are saying right tackle. Uh, that's if we get a left tackle at seven. Obviously, if we don't get a left tackle at all in the draft, I mean, left tackle is probably number one off the charts. Safety, 11%, which I totally agree with because there's so many safeties out there that you can bring in. And then finally, defensive line of 20%. So if you guys get an opportunity, go ahead and go vote. We got 142 of you that voted already. So I appreciate you. Um, but that's what we got going on right now. All right, so let's go to the no-fly zone real quick. We'll, we'll break these down real quick. So no-fly zone. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm doing, okay? Roger McCrary had like a 71 score last year, okay? So again, when it comes to Roger McCrary um, from Auburn, 2022 draft, second round, very high, 35. I'm looking at his scores from last season, and his best game, he was our best corner by far. I mean, you don't want any war score of 250-something for Christian Fulton. And even bunting wasn't that great. And I can't believe Arizona paid him so much. Like, he was, he was okay. Avery, terrible. So the corners last year for the Titans were terrible. You still won six games. So Rand's like, hey, we got to fix this. Um, his best game looks to be week one, at least overall. He had an 84.4 coverage grade against the New Orleans Saints, 79.3 overall. The next highest coverage grade that he had was week six against Baltimore in Europe at 75.9. Then we go all the way down to week 13, 74.8 against the Colts. Then he was 73.3 at Miami, and then he was 70.8 against Houston. So when you're talking about improvement with McCrary, you're talking week 13, 14, and 15, pretty much the season was already over, and he put up three back-to-back-to-back, right? Back-to-back-to-back, 74, 73, 70 coverage score uh, into week 15 against Houston. Uh, week 17 at Houston, again, 72.6. Last game of the year, 72. Um, he didn't give up any touchdowns last year. And the other thing that he didn't do, well, he had one one interception, fine. But he didn't give up any touchdowns. And his yards per reception was also really low last year, I want to say. Okay? I want to say it was nine something. But I could be wrong. So 87.3 passer rating thrown his way. He did have five penalties. The guy we just picked up and traded for had 17. Six didn't count. So I'm just throwing that one out there to you. Um, again, I think it's because of the aggressive style he plays. And it was 10.0 yards per reception. The year before, 11.4. So, again, he's, if we're talking about the weakest link of the crew of the three, he would be the weakest link because he's just more of a slot corner. But he was our best corner last year. 
and comparing to a Wouzie, like he can hold his own against a Wouzie. We we've already talked about him. We're hoping a Wouzie can get back to 2021. Remember, he tore his ACL, I believe, in 2022. So last year was kind of a mulligan year for him. And plus, offensively, it's hard, right? Because Burrow wasn't effective last year. We know our offense didn't help any of the corners out. It didn't help any of the defensive line or the middle linebackers or the safeties out because the Tennessee Titans on offense kept giving the ball away to the other team, whether it be a three and out, whether it be a turnover, whether it be a dumb boneheaded call on the offensive coordinator, Tim Kelly. The defense was getting out on the field way more. I mean, even in that first game, Will Levis threw four touchdown passes. Was it the opening play Malik Willis fumbles the ball? Maybe it was the second play of the game. He fumbled the ball when he got in there. And the Falcons picked it up and had the ball. I think they ended up going up 3-0. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. So, again, when you're talking about a no-fly zone, they need a safety. They need one more safety. Amani Hooker gets hurt way too much. He still needs to be on the team. Some of you are saying get rid of him. No, don't get rid of Amani Hooker because when he plays, he's good. So you just got to hope that Vrabel's style, Vrabel's system, and it's Vrabel's fault, and Amani Hooker is going to be fine. He needs a sidekick, though. Justin Simmons would be nice. Let's go, Rand. Pick the phone up. Let's make it happen. And then finally, you're talking about your prize corner that you just brought in. The Tennessee Titans are fine. I have no question in my mind that they are not going to be effective against the pass. Now, even if your best corners bring in Jalen Ramsey in his prime, you bring in Dion, and then who else? I mean, you pick any other corner you want. We'll, we'll go with Snead for crying out loud. You put those three in in their primes, and you're going up against Peyton Manning. My guess is Peyton Manning would shred you if you gave Manning all day to throw. So you still need a good pass rush. You're still going to have to get after the quarterback. Weaver is not that guy, I don't think. So you're still going to have Landry. Landry is going to be better this year than he was last year. I, I, I know that for a fact. Um, He's been pretty durable other than the one thing that happened to him, which I'm not even going to say. Okay, you know what was wrong. I don't want to curse him. But when him coming in with that bad foot, supposedly, like, I'm telling you what, Landry's given us a lot. Landry's good. Landry can do his stuff. Um, just ask the Colts. I mean, he didn't do it like to hurt him, but he took out Anthony Richardson. I mean, he's quick. He got to the edge on him. So Landry's going to be fine, but he needs someone else. And, and Weaver's just not it. So Arden Key's great too. I forgot about him. So you will have Key and Landry. Um, Key was really good in the preseason. I mean, he got a lot of fan. I thought he had a good year, um, but part of the problem <laughs> with the uh, the amount of uh, expectations when it came to, to Key was for the fact that he was just destroying the left tackles at camp. And, and one was Andre Dillard, and now we kind of know why. But but honestly, Key showed up at key moments. So, again, we're talking that no-fly zone. It really could be a big deal, but they need, an, they need an inside linebacker. So what do you guys think? Your expectations when it comes to the secondary. I mean, that's kind of what we're focusing on tonight. I think it's – I think the expectation's high. And I've already thrown away the expectations with Snead because I said it don't matter. He's got to be. that He's got to be. That's got to be him. If he comes in and he's like, oh, gosh, I'm not even going to say like Christian Fulton, but we'll go with like, like a guy who's like just average. Maybe Christian Fulton, because Christian Fulton had a really good, what, 2021? Maybe like Christian Fulton's middle ground. You know, because there's a lot of bad, but there were there were some good. So in the middle, if that's him over the next two years, oh gosh, not good. But if he plays and he's out there being very productive, and like I said, that he he needs to he needs to be that guy. He does. And now you, I mean, think about it. Jones. Everyone thinks Chris Jones MVP, whatever for the defense, and he was phenomenal. But for that article that I read to you that would have given Snead the MVP in 2022, could you imagine having him? getting that MVP over Jeffrey Simmons and still having Jeffrey Simmons playing the way he is. I mean, you're talking about bringing in a guy that's like an immediately elite defensive guy. That's why I'm excited. And Steve can be that guy. I just giving up multiple first round picks or giving up picks for, for a guy that I just, you know, you might just see a score and be like, Oh, he's, 
He's got a 70 some pro football f- focus grade. But there's just so more to it. Again, if we just go back over it, this is last year alone. Okay, I know this is last year, right? But if you want to go back to 2023, which, or I'm sorry, 2023, which would have been last year, I mean, you're still getting a rock solid guy. I mean, yeah, you got penalties. He didn't have any sacks. I mean, you're not really paying corners for sacks, but he had a lot of sacks the year before in 2022. And again, Sneed, durable. He's out there on the field. War score, really high in 2022. Uh, coverage grade, pretty good around 72, right? But the two key things, 51% completion percentage when it's thrown his way, and there are 80-some targets. And the second thing was the passer rating thrown his way, 55.9. I mean, that is phenomenal. And that's why he's I, – I have a lot of confidence in what he can do. Uh, Stoner Titan, upload. How do you feel when the Titans almost went to the Super Bowl in 2019? Man, I mean, that was tough because they were up 17-7. to 7. 17 to seven and Rashawn Evans was playing on like a bum foot and it really showed up on that touchdown run and the Titans still had a lot of holes in the corners position, a bunch of no name guys because of some injuries. So they held their own and ultimately in that game, the reason why they won Andy Reid's smart, but Patrick Mahomes didn't necessarily throw it deep but he used the pass as a way to keep the Titans run game off the field. And that is just ridiculous. Like, I I mean, I, when we went to that game, I thought, Oh, well, we'll run the ball. We'll run clock. They did the same thing to us, except they didn't run the ball. They just short passes, accurate passes, third and four, move the chains clock runs. Tannehill couldn't even get on the field. And by the time he did in the second half, it didn't matter. And then ultimately uh, we lost. But, yeah, I I thought we definitely were the – we were just catching lightning in a bottle, and we were playing the best out of anyone, and that includes the Chiefs. Remember, the week before the Chiefs played the Texans, we're down like 24-0. And you get on people for not taking field goals. Well, they took the field goal in that game, and it came back to cost them because they could have went up 28-0. Adam says, Caleb Farley has nerve damage causing a loss of strength in his legs. That's not good. Considering who we trotted out there last year at safety and linebacker, we signed a couple meh, vets. Think we'll be fine at those spots. Replacing Autry's production is the biggest need. Great idea for Jay. Uh, Trone Force. Sneed shut down Tyree Kill. Love it. Threw him down too. Ken says, return of MMC and B. My man catch no balls, baby. That's awesome, man. Great shout out for Ken. That, that's awesome, man. We're definitely drafting the safety in the fourth, says JS75. Tornado or volcano together is a very bad combination, says Graham. Titan MVP says, I need that hoodie. Where did you get it from? I've one of those NFL shop deal things over years ago. Years ago. Like the problem I have is like I just my wardrobe is ridiculously stale. I mean it is. I the problem I have is like, you know, like my fashion, and this has been like this forever, even back when I was in uh, junior high and high school, like back when I was in junior high, this is kind of silly. I got to admit this, but back when I was in junior high, like it was all about basketball jerseys with the real shorts, the, the matching combo. So like I had the golden state, Chris Weber. I had Harold Miner of the Miami Heat with the Heat shorts. Obviously, Michael Jordan, the 23 and the 45 in white and red. And it's just, it was all about getting the basketball jerseys. And then back in the day, you could go to the the, the mall and they would have all sorts of jerseys. And not the, the, you know, the the copycat ones, right, from China or anything. We're, We're talking, you know, replica jerseys. And you could get the replica shorts. I remember having a Jawan Howard jersey. All right. When it said the 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 B U L L E T S back in the day when they were actually called that in Washington. Right? So so I think for the most part, like, man, that, that was my wardrobe in junior high. I also wore sweatpants all the time in junior, but that kind of came back, by the way. And then in high school. And then moving into college, like it was all like, it was all pretty much Titans my senior year of high school and then in college. And, and even now, like all I do is ever buy is 
Titans stuff. So sweatshirts, shirts, you know, sweatpants to this man. I mean, Titans, Titans, Titans. Hats are always Titans other than this Adidas one I'm wearing. So, yeah. Uh, Project says, what if the Titans trade their next year first round pick for Burks for T. Higgins? Uh, I'm going to say that's not happening. But, again, T. Higgins, there's no team that traded for him. So either their their Bengals are asking for way too much, or maybe maybe the teams just are passing on T. Higgins. I don't know. Sixty seventh on the like button. Let's go. Eighty two likes. We're trying to get a hundred likes. We appreciate it. Lumen says exactly what I picked. Uploader. B. French says I'm still saying left tackle. We until we get a left tackle. That's true. B. French. Shizzy says a tornado can't move a volcano, but it can make it worse. LOL. You guys are awesome. Lone uh, star tight and wish we still had David Long. I know for $5 million, we didn't bring him back. Can't blame Cradle of Farley to stay on this team as long as possible and collect his rookie contract. He may never get another NFL contract. And I will always feel bad for him because he's had a lot of things go against him. And he puts on a, a brave face. I mean, remember his rookie, like he was really upset he didn't go top 10. And um, I thought with that and then, but, but you can't help injuries. I mean, that's not like, you know what I mean? Like, sure. If you go to the weight room and you're, you're just doing massive amounts of heavy weight and you refuse to wear a, um, you know, uh, basically a belt, then, you know, I, I, whatever you don't have a spot or ever. I mean, ugh, whatever. But I mean, he did everything possible and he just kept getting hurt. And then obviously you can't help for what happens like tragedy wise. So. Shogun Roger, more of a slot guy. You're right. Do you think Elijah Molden is good? I mean, they're going to try him out at safety. They did last year. I, he ha- was productive at times, but that is a guy that, like, if we had more time, we definitely should break down to see how he kind of graded out because watching him, he shows up at moments and then he disappears at moments. Hawkins, what's up? D-line is available to make every other position defense better. I think it's the most important because of the lack of linebackers availability, availability, but understandably needing our QB on defense with an inside linebacker green dot guy. B French says, man, we're looking so different next season. All are all you sure we're ready to throw the ball 50 times a game. According to Callahan, he's going to do what he needs to do to win. And I think that is super, super exciting rather than going into the game plan of, Hey, it doesn't matter who we play. It doesn't matter if the box is stacked against us. It doesn't matter if every 11 member on defense inside that box, we're still going to run it. And we're going to run it down your throat. Like, I like that, that we're going to be a little bit more revolutionary, more of a visionary, those kind of people, right? Shout out to Seth freaking Rollins. Charles, shout out for being a member. I said, I hope the wide receiver and defensive backs make each other better in practice. And that's a good point, too. Sneed still needs to improve. On his comeback routes and long slants, I'm excited, though. Tighten up. Good comment. Tomorrow, I'm late. Just leaving a concert at the Ryman. Shout out to you, man. What? Who was the uh, main attraction tonight? We went to um, my wife's been there, um, and then I've been to the the Opry a couple times. But uh, Graham says, what do you all think about the Titans taking a chance on Isaiah Sill? I mean, that would I would be for it. I would be for it. I know he didn't grade out very well, but I definitely would be for it. Uh, let's see. Ninja DJ said, love the approach of the offseason. Business-like. I agree. Uh, Lone, uh, Lone Star Titans says, uh, Logan, Ryan, Malcolm Butler are probably our last good cornerback combo. The gaming chef. Who cares about the old stuff? Good point. <laughs> it was cringe. Sure was. Sci-Fi Channel just found a new movie on their <laughs> Volnado coming soon to a TV. That's awesome. Uh, Caleb Farley, too light skinned to play corner. Cortland Finnegan was an anomaly. Uh, just joking. Uh, Lone Star Titan says, yeah, Cortland was just bleached. Uh, I don't know where you guys are going. Walk says, is Simmons a inside linebacker gun signing at this point of his career? I think he's worth a shot, especially you can get him low key. What is your thoughts? Oh, we got a Justin Fields. See, I mentioned Justin Fields. We all of a sudden get a guy in here with the Justin Fields a little icon. What is your thought on putting Caleb to safety? Um, I think at this, oh, we're 11 likes away from a hundred, by the way. And Rocky top says tighten up. I, I don't, it's not that I'm a, against moving him to safety or trying him at safety. I just think we already tried that with Molden and I'm just, I just don't, I'm not sure I want to do that. I, I'd rather just have a legitimate safety. 
As far as Ridley versus Snead, this is just a general question before I go back to the chat. Um, so if you guys want to talk to the chat in this chat, right to my left, and then we'll go back to the poll question. We're trying to get to the poll question, at least 200. But the bottom line is, me to you, it's a court case, right? It's what it's designed for. Ridley v. A Sneed in court, who wins that court case? Who is going to be the more effective player long-term when it comes to the Tennessee Titans over their four-year contracts? Now, we know Ridley's paid more at 92 than, obviously, Sneed at 76. Uh, we got Ridley trying to be the number one wide receiver. Probably can be that with, with D-Hop. You know what I mean? D-Hop wouldn't mind being 1A, 1B, those kind of things. But then you got Sneed, who's going to be the number one corner on defense. So my question to you is which one in this court case are you taking is going to win this thing? Is it going to be Ridley or is it going to be Sneed? And I think if both of these guys are effective and both of these guys play out of their mind, now I do hear stuff chatter from the outside that say Ridley is going to be a bust. Ridley's one of those free agent, huge boss moves, not going to work out for Rand, and he's not going to give you the production that you're going to pay him for. You had to overpay Ridley, by the way, but there's a lot of people that are very high on Calvin Ridley. I mean, he was a stud when he was with Atlanta, and then he had all that problems happen, and then he got injured. But again, he he was a stud, and he could be very effective, and he was alongside Julio Jones, but he's going to have D-Hop. So again, I think some of us are shocked the Titans have not upgraded wide receiver still and they're okay with bringing back Nick Westbrook at Canaan for $2 million. They're okay with bringing back Kyle Phillips, former fifth round pick a few years ago and they're uh, okay with uh, Traylon Burks. Now it will still be uh, determined on the draft night but I think bringing in a youth guy they take him 38. I mean some of you want him to take him at 7. Marvin Harrison Jr. falls down the board. I mean that's that's tough but you still need a left tackle. So that would go on Rand's board value thing, right? Um, I would still think that left tackle is not out there in free agency. And if he was, you already passed on him. Another team sucked him up. So you got to, I think you got to go left tackle. And I, and I think still to this day, some of you get crazy with me on this one, but I still to this day, when all those people were coming out with all sorts of chatter about the combine and how the Titans have already made their deal. They are picking a wide receiver because that's all they talked about it. There was a reason they brought that up. They want the outside thinking they're going to, and it tricked a lot of fans. It tricked a lot of media, the local media as well. But again, I just, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying it at all. So who are you taking? You just put in the comments, Ridley, or you take it Sneed. You got to pick one or the other. In a court case, we all can't be winners. One wins, one loses. So which one's going to win? Long-term, long-term, not just this year, but long-term. When you go back and people talk about the Titans, I know some of you don't want to talk about the past, but when you go back and we talk about the Tennessee Titans over that time period, okay, maybe even winning a Super Bowl here coming up quick, going into the new stadium, which one is going to be the one that's going to make the best impression, right? Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen were huge. They worked well together, but... Scotty gets this, and, and he doesn't want to understand this, but he does. It was all about Michael Jordan. Like, Michael Jordan will be the one remembered in the end of the day, not Scotty Pippen, right? So which one will be remembered between Ridley and Sneed? I'm going to go ahead and give you my answer. 